Well, Fox News political analyst Juan Williams was just talking to me off camera, so I didn't see the teleprompter. He just wrote an article in which he says, the chances President Trump leaves office prematurely through impeachment or resignation keep going up. He says Republicans are in no hurry to defend Trump given his low approval numbers, while evidence the Trump campaign colluded with Russia supposedly increases every day. Dun, dun, dun. Williams also boldly says Democrats have made themselves look apolitical in recent months, which presumably will give them moral authority if they actually attempt to impeach Trump. You'll have to read the rest of it for the rest of it. Juan joins us now. Great to see you, Juan. Thank you so much, Chuck. So he's been there like 20 minutes, and already you're impeaching him. When are you guys voting? Right. I'm, not, I'm not impeaching him. I'm just telling you, though, from the political point of view, you look at the poll numbers right now. There was a really intriguing poll last week by a left-leaning group, yeah. and it said that if people believe that Russia was involved in colluding with the Trump campaign, about half of them say Trump should either resign or be impeached. Well, and sure. then the second shoe was, oh, guess what? 44%, about half of them believe that Russia was involved. So these are people who are ready for resignation, impeachment, or and as you know, uh, his most recent poll numbers have more than 50%. But that's, I mean, that's based on a hypothetical question. I mean, if right. Trump turns out to be responsible for sinking the Lusitania, I would think he could get impeached as well. I mean, there are a lot of, right? right. So, I mean, the problem with predicating anything like this on the poll numbers is that when it comes to Trump, po polls are not just wrong, but like they're unbelievably wrong. They're they historically spectacular. Wrong. Well, up to a point. I mean, they can be spectacularly wrong in estimating the depth of his support. And But look at the reality on the political ground. I think in the last week we've had some instruction from the Republican side, and I think that's really where you got to focus. It's not that Democrats have the power, but remember, when you start looking at Republicans like Freedom Caucus moving away and saying, you know what, this guy can't punish me in my district, that tells you something about what the polls are showing in those districts. But I wonder, okay, so the truth, as you know, is that Trump is not a conventional Republican not at all, all, and that his views, his political views, are not in line with those of a lot of Republicans in the House of Representatives. Correct. The question is, who represents more actual voters, Donald Trump or an individual member of Congress? I mean, it's like not even close. Right. So do they have the power to destroy the Trump presidency? I'm not sure they do. Well, that's the question. Here's the thing. A lot of Republicans fear that they will be maligned as having undercut the Trump presidency right. if they give in to anything that looks like, you know, we think there's a serious problem here with Russia. So they're, they're reluctant to do that because they don't want anybody to say, you know what, you're the one, you're the traitor who turned on the man we elected president. As you point out, he's got nation, nationwide support. But what, right now, they're also very much in touch with the idea that Flynn is asking for immunity. Carter Page, uh, Paul, uh, Roger Stone, all these people, I'm going to come testify. And they're very aware that the tide may be shifting, and they don't want to get caught in the, in the underdraft and pushed out and have the Republican brand damaged by the Trump presidency. But see, here's what I find so striking. You've got two stories unfolding in parallel. Right. On the one side, you have the allegation that Trump coordinated with the Russian government, for which there's precisely no evidence at all. Not there's yet. not one scintilla of evidence. On the other side, you have Trump's claim that he was surveilled by the Obama administration, right. okay? Which may not be strictly speaking accurate, but there is actual evidence that there was in fact surveillance of Trump and his associates during the campaign and the transition. No, no, and no, now no. We, of Trump? Of Trump, no. And, no, today reported that Trump and people in his orbit were caught up in surveillance. Caught up, so that's an important distinction to well, make for the audience. Surveilled. That it's, no, no, that they're caught up as the U.S. government was legitimately and legally pursuing surveillance of Russians. But that's the thing. How do we, why are we assuming all of a sudden that this surveillance was both legitimate and legal? I mean, because my assumption if, is that all of it's legal. Yeah. But why would it, because everything is legal, the government does. No, 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 no. No, it is. No, no. Nobody ever goes to jail. Are you kidding? No. Are you, did uh, Lois Lerner go to jail? Let me, I don't know that what she did was illegal. No, that's your didn't. assumption. But I will say this, that when you have the FBI director come before the Congress and say, I'm involved in an investigation and not, and say, no evidence that uh, President Obama ever wiretapped or surveilled Donald Trump, I think to myself, well, he, if this was illegal activity, he certainly would point that out. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. I right. don't even under, because I think the FBI director's public behavior is bizarre. And I think anybody watching, I thought his, his re revealing the investigation to Hillary during the campaign was bizarre. The whole thing is bizarre. But in one sentence, don't you think someone in the White House, before Susan Rice unmasked the names, would have said, hey, Susan Rice, in the middle of a presidential campaign, maybe you shouldn't do that. Well, wait a second. Remember, she, if, she, if this is true, that she unmasked yeah. the name, 
There are legitimate reasons that she wants to know who the Russians are talking about or talking to in order to determine what is going on and affect the national security interests of the United States. She was a legitimate well, US there might have been. There might also have been illegitimate reasons. Well, that I don't know, but well, I can see that you like the conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy. It actually happened. It but no, out. but she didn't, there's, not, there's no proof that it's illegal or she did something well, it wrong. It's highly unethical to me. Okay. Juan Williams, come back. I appreciate it, Tucker. Thank you. Thank you.